Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Friday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Elkan, and Dennis Dick. It is Friday. It's a bit of a, a freaky Friday. Uh, let's see. Dennis, what do we have today? We have Dennis is not feeling well. We have Marketify, the platform through which our chat is hosted on, on uh, premarket.benzinga.com. Marketify is down, so our main chat is also down. Uh, my trade station is not working, so we're on think or swim. Joel, are you having any other problems this morning? I should have stayed at home. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we the show must go on. It's all Joel's fault. <laughs> I'm blaming Joel for everything. I got a cold. I'm blaming Joel. I haven't seen Joel in two months, but I'm still blaming him. I think he gave me a cold. Somehow. Okay. Well, the show must go on nonetheless. Uh, on today's show, we're going to be talking about, we have, let's see, Duluth earnings. We have Snapchat getting into mobile gaming. We have uh, pod stocks that, that are looking to break out. And our guest today will be able to talk about that last subject. He's Alan Brockstein, the 420 investor, he will join us at 8.35. He's also the founder of New Cannabis Ventures. Uh, let's get to the markets here, guys. Joel, what's the word here on the overnight session? Uh, we're green ahead of the jobs number here, up 3.75 at 28.86.50. The number, the only number on the upside, 89 and a quarter. That was Wednesday's high. That's the high of the move. That's the high this morning. My next resistance level, 2,900.75. That is the April 10th high. On the downside, 80.50. Uh, that's just below uh, the close, the high close of the rebound at 82.75. But let's just call it 28.80. Let me make it simple. 28.80, great support. 28.90, resistance. Uh, crude in the red by 13 cents here. Uh, just leaning on the lows from the last few days. We'll see if it... Uh, Decides to go in the lower 61 handle. That's down a dime at $62. Gold in the red by two and a half dollars at 12 91 90 Silver climbing above $15. Not by much. Up 2.1 cents at fifteen ten. And Bitcoin doing the battle. This is a Bitcoin futures doing a battle with $5,000. Uh, it is up $202 at $5,015. Let's see, and, uh, bring in uh, Triple D. Uh, how much did you pay for that hairdo? Oh, I know. I'm ha I'm sick. This is what you get when I'm not feeling well. You get bad hair too. So this is bad head at its extreme. I mean, it is bad today. So <laughs> I I pulled myself out of bed just to do the show though because I'm feeling it here. The boy was sick two weeks ago. The girl was sick a week and a half ago. The wife was sick last week. So I guess it was inevitable that it was going to eventually get me, and it did. And it's hitting me hard today. Had a little bit touch of it yesterday. Today, I'm feeling it pretty good. So anyways, maybe I'm going to have to have a, a little afternoon nap or something. But right now, the show must go on. Bad hair and all. And uh, if you want to join us uh, with our chat room, if you want to join us on our YouTube page, I see uh, BZ Tokyo uh, made the journey over. So that's what we'll be chatting today. Everyone be nice in there, okay? So let's jump into the movers of the day. There is a few here, and obviously we're going to get the jobs number. So maybe we should just preview that first because the jobs number is going to be what moves the market here after 8.30. And... Uh, I'd say it was quiet trade yesterday, but it was not. It was sector rotation yesterday. S&Ps overall look kind of quiet, but I tell you, you know, amongst that S&P range, which wasn't huge yesterday, only about $1.50 on the SPY, there was a lot of movement. Cloud stocks killed. Retail stocks got bought like crazy. So call it rotation station. That's what we saw yesterday. Is this going to continue today after the jobs number? We will see. I mean, uh, the street's looking for like a good number here. They're propping up the spoos ahead of time. Uh, I guess a weak number would be good, right, for lower interest rates. I, I really don't know. I I'm really baffled at the way the financials rebounded, uh, the dividend stocks. I mean, it's just going to be with the number. If it's a super hot number, then I guess that will be good for the financials because interest rates will be back on the table. But 
I think it's just going to be nah, just going to be a blah number. And I think they don't think we're going to much movement. So I don't have to get off at 827 no, you, to go start getting ready to trade. We're just going to have crickets here after the number. Uh, hopefully not. Hopefully there's some action, but uh, we'll let we'll let you hop off and, uh, you know, make some markets and we'll see what happens with the number. We'll see. I'll be watching the spoos. So that's that's what I'll be watching. You can watch those uh, 2000 stocks that you follow and trade. T TLT is trading down here this morning. Banks are trading up ahead of this number. So maybe they feel like uh, the Fed's going to have a little bit more reason to get hawkish after this number today. We'll have to see if the number is going to be hot or cold, but we'll get to that number at 830. Let's move to the big retail mover of the day. And a lot of retail stocks were hot yesterday. One stock that was not after hours is the online underwear company. Duluth Holdings, D-L-T-H. Like I said, I have some of their underwear. And I have a love-hate. I actually like the underwear right off the hop. And then I was like, I don't know if I like these underwear or not. So I have some of them. I wear them sometimes. But uh, I don't like them as much as I did before. I don't know why that is. But uh, they're kind of thicker. So it's a thicker underwear. So I don't know what to say. D-L-T-H, anyways, that's my own story. Stock's down 20%. Market doesn't like the underwear at all. No, the Q4 EPS, uh, 64 cents versus a 75 cent estimate sales of 250 versus 258 million dollars. So a miss on both the EPS and sales for the uh, the fourth quarter. They gave some fiscal year guidance as well. The EPS guidance that they gave, the range was 74 to 80 cents for an 83 cent estimate. So right there, and their sales guidance at around 650 million dollars for the year, also a little light. Trend has not been your friend in this thing for a while. Back in July, it got up, and that was obviously upside capitulation the day of September 7th, 7th uh, looking at 2018, when it got up to $35.69. We now have had a two-for-one stock split, Joel. We're down the 18 handle. Is it time to get down and dirty in the underwear company, yeah. or do you think there's more pain ahead for shareholders? DLTH. I will just say Trend is absolutely not your friend in this one. Uh, not at all. And uh, the pre-market chart looks absolutely horrible. You're just sitting here at the lows of the session. No bounce in sight right now. Taking out the former low of the move, that was at uh, 1973 back in January. So that would be your resistance. Even when I go to the monthlies here, I can't even find anything on the monthlies because, oh, okay, 17 and a quarter. Uh, was a monthly low that you had, oh boy. That's uh, 10% lower than it is right now, 17 yeah. and a quarter. Yeah, 17 and a quarter uh, was a, your low in June of uh, last year. So if you're looking for more, that's it. I mean, the people who would be buying in here are the people that are short and where they decide to you know, buy on strength or buy on weakness. Right now, is there a bid out there, some iceberg or something at 1875, or is it just heavily offered that? Uh, it's wide, 1870 to 1890. It's Time? just bouncing around. But I mean, price discovery has happened. The stock has been leaking ever since last night. So um, I don't see this thing. This isn't going to be one that's boom back at 22, 23 bucks. This is not like it's just trade down here for 10 minutes. Yep. It's been trade down here for the entire after hour session, the entire pre market session. Basically, eight hours of trading here now. And it's traded some volume too. So uh, market has given it through. Uh, verdict on this one and it is red and i don't think it's coming back anytime soon i think you even get near 20 bucks now i think that becomes resistance that was the old resistance back in 2018 and obviously psychological level as well so in any rally here i think it's going to be met with more sellers so not a fan of the stock and you know what not really a fan of the underwear anymore either okay and uh just talking retail uh this uh someone made some comments in the chat yeah. here did uh karen feinerman move a stock last night yeah cpri this was two nights ago so okay. she featured this one pitched it you gotta watch these pitches and karen feinerman is a uh, fast money is a mover and a shaker she started talking about cpri uh last or two nights ago it would have been and the stock went you can see yesterday the big pop in it it went from the, the settlement the day before, which I'm just trying to grab that number there, Joel. It's 40, it was 45.75. And it went up to the 47 handle. So she popped at 4% just on her pitch. It kind of meandered there, but you know what? It then took off yesterday with the retail rally. So two things, two catalysts kickstart again. One, that everybody was buying retail stocks hand over fist. Two, this already had a running start because of Karen Feinerman pitching it the night before. So it was a very good day for CPRI. That being said, you are coming into a major level here now, and that level is $50. Let's see what it does there. Uh, I'm going to go look at the book. 
while you uh, break down the technicals. Yeah, uh, strong day, uh, 46.95 to 49.31, closed near the high of the session. So you want immediately to follow through through that 49.38. Uh, I am looking, it had a big gap up day. Uh, this was back in uh, June, and it went to 49.95, and it just lost steam immediately. I wonder if that was like an earnings report. Immediately lost steam here. So yeah. 50, uh, anything in the book there? Hey, you know what? It's small. I only see 7,400 shares, which isn't significant there. So, I mean, it's early here. Maybe the book's going to fill up. You would think psychologically it'd be a level. So that's obviously the level we got up to after that day that it had back in February when it kissed up to 49.95. So let's see what it does there. Can it get above 50? Can it hold above 50? One thing is it does have a running start. I think it will challenge 50 today. I think it probably takes it out. And anybody who's leaning on it short is probably going to get stopped out here if you're leading on the 50. But I don't know, um, you know, retail has been strong. Yeah, too. let's talk retail, so, just in general. Yeah, I mean, just all overall. So it's not just the stock. I mean, Macy's had a, you know, it's been quiet for, for months. And all of a sudden, just blasts off yesterday with the retail sector rotation. We were talking about the cloud stocks got hit, and they were buying retail stocks. So Macy's went from 2450 up to 26 bucks. You know how I love my two-day move. So that would say actually being long most of these things, at least for this morning, um, often I find reversals happen around 9, 45, 10 o'clock. So a lot of times what I do is I like to be long the retail stocks that are strong. I like to be long the stocks that has an outside, uh, like a, a, a weird move. You could call it weird yesterday um, uh, on strength. And then following through usually the next morning, because you get the Johnny come lately is to come in and say, whoa, Macy's starting to get hot. I better come in and buy it. So we are seeing a little bit of follow through here this morning. Wouldn't be surprised to see more. Usually I watch though around 10 o'clock sometimes to get a turn, but maybe Macy's, Kohl's had a good day, Nordstrom had a good day, The Gap, GPS had a good day. I mean, if it was retail, it was moving. And uh, big level, uh, long-term level here for you Macy's traders here. You had your gap down day. I believe that was on earnings, the last earnings report. You gapped down from 31.72 to 25.11. And uh, on that earnings day, High, 26.83. The next day, high, 26.78. And then we've just meandered uh, lower. Now we're coming back up. But uh, so if you're looking for a major breakout to the upside here, you got to clear 27 bucks. I'm going to put this on my radar and see when it, if it takes it out, because then you get into a big. Then you get in that gap yeah, area. Yeah, then you get into that gap. I'd be nervous out short. And I think on pullbacks here, I hate chasing stocks. And the stock was up. You know, $2.40. So you're talking about a stock that was up 6% yesterday. It's a big move. So do you get a pullback maybe in the mid-25s? Maybe. Um, you know, but, I mean, if I was short, I'd be real nervous. And, uh, boy, oh, boy, who – we can't see the uh, Benzinga chat, but someone asked us about XPO yesterday. I think it was Ed Parker. And I said, hey, you know, it looks like it's trying to yeah. break out. Holy moly. That thing was really strong, strong right out of the gate. Yeah. And I said, hey, maybe it can fill the gap. Well, that's what it did yesterday. So we'll keep an eye on uh, you had to gap up to 58.52. You got the 58.72. Let's see if I'll uh, make a run at 60 bucks. Well, you know what else moved yesterday? FedEx had a pretty good day. And FedEx is back. I mean, I held this one through the report. I still have it on my long-term portfolio. And we were saying when it was dipping down in the 160s, like I got down to 167, 168 on the earnings report, disappointing numbers. We were saying that we kind of liked the, buying the dip on this one. And you know what? Here it is a week and a half or two weeks later. It's got all those losses back, plus knocking on the door and looking like it wants to go higher here to me too. Not that we're big pattern traders, but I can see a pretty clear W here. And, you know, a little handle, if you want a little cup and handle style here. I think there's room on FedEx 200. Who's the value? my who, book on this one because I got this in the long term who's portfolio. A, who's the value guy that we had on a couple of weeks ago? Uh, big some guy. of these values, some of these stocks, and there's who a good point that? you're making there too, because value stocks were the ones getting bought yesterday. The ones with the lower PEs were getting bought. Stuff with the higher PEs, the Momo stuff, the cloud stuff, which has obviously got a lot of high PEs over there. Um, that stuff was the stuff getting sold. So it was a classic rotation trade yesterday where I would was say from Miller? growth to value. Was it Trip Miller? Tool? Yeah, very good. Yep. Trip Miller. Uh, our value guy was talking about that one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Dennis. We we'll move back. So we don't have a lot of earnings here on the schedule for today. We actually have none. We have the jobs number. 
But I want to just go over to the ratings parade here for a second, too, because there's a couple really interesting ones here. And moving not to an upgrade or a downgrade by the initiation, Dow Chemical gets initiated with an underweight, which is J.P. Morgan's equivalent to sell, with a price target of $49. And man, I did not realize how much of a run DOW has had since it's come back on the board, obviously spun off from DWDP. But look at this. It was when issued there five days ago, but it was still trading. Fifty dollars, you know, back. We're just looking back on the 29th. That goes from 49 to 452. The next day goes from 51 to 54. The next day from 54 to 57. A little inside day, but did actually make a, just a, or try to make a new high, but it was an inside day. Didn't quite do it. And then yesterday, blasting off and getting above 60. So up 10 points in five trading sessions. Man, is this like the whole future here? That is a ridiculous run, in my opinion, for DOW uh, stock that was on the board, got taken over by Dow Dupont, and they spun it back off. I mean, I don't see the growth here on the stocks of 20% in five days. So applause to JP Morgan here for having some guts to make a contrarian call. So many analysts just go with the flow. Here is a full-on contrarian call. Price target 49. They say it's going to give it all back. Joel, what are your thoughts? You are yeah. definitely fighting the trend here, mm. uh, which is up on this stock. But what are your thoughts? Uh, big, uh, big green can. I mean, a great run here. Uh, I don't mind the downgrade here. Down 81 cents. Uh, let's see here. Fifth, we're not even through yesterday's low yet. We're a buck 80 from yesterday's yeah, low here. Yeah, a lot of work to do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Not work the downside to do. If JP Morgan yep. wants that $49 price target. Uh, the shorts are probably just squirming, uh, happy of this. So we'll see if they try and press it. But uh, a lot of people underwater, I just don't think it's just going to whoosh uh, right down. And uh, who knows? I mean, you know, you talk about analyst ratings and stuff. Look what uh, look what Co-America did yesterday, Dennis. Uh, yeah. The double downgrade opened at the they low. They shrugged it off. Yeah. The stock opened going up low, that. opened really low. Like that was a low. So the day before the stock closed, and I said, what did I say? It was worth 2%. So anyways, you look at that, and it closed the day before at 76.89. The thing opened down at 75.29 low tech. So that was a pretty low. Actually, I guess it was a 2%. So price it all in right off the hop, but they came in and they bought it right back. So I'm telling you, the banks, the banks are hot, and they were looking. The banks are at least hot in the short term here, last five, six days. So when you get a bank downgrade, even if it's a regional, people start coming in and scooping it up, and that's what they did yesterday. And you saw some of the other regionals, same thing. We're going to get, obviously, some major movement in the banks here after 8.30, depending on what this jobs number looks like. But last five days, banks have been performing well. Uh, Dennis, real quick here. Someone just uh, popped in the chat, and they're asking about the U.S. dollar and versus the Canadian dollar. Did we never talk currencies here, but I know you like to keep an eye on the Canadian dollar because... Uh, I love in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I make U.S. money. Okay. What do you think? Um, let's just break it down. Can you bring up a chart of it? Uh, oh, I haven't looked at it for a while, but we have been sitting around not doing much. But kind of, one thing about the Canadian dollar, always consider it is an oil currency. So as oil gets stronger, the Canadian dollar will get stronger. If oil gets weaker, Canadian dollar will get weaker. And if you put the chart of the USO on top of the Canadian dollar, it will look similar. The, the action obviously will be a lot more muted because currencies don't move nearly as much as you know the oil commodity itself. But it's not a coincidence that Canadian dollar has strengthened slowly in the last couple of months when oil has went up too. I mean, those two charts, they put them on top of each other, and obviously the USO is going to be you know four, five or six times as moving as fast, but they look similar. So one thing to consider if you're trading the Canadian dollar is 135, 136, it's been psychological resistance, we're 133.81. So if oil starts to roll over, if you think this oil rally is extended, another way to play it, if you don't want to play it by shorting oil, is to short the Canadian dollar. All right. That's a good breakdown of the Canadian dollar here. Uh, could we just talk about Snap real quickly? Uh, that that uh, had, a, had uh, some news? Huh? I guess that's my cue. Yes, yeah, Snap uh, announced yesterday that they're getting into. Well, actually, I don't know if this was a totally new announcement, but they are getting into the mobile gaming space. They're going to let users make it possible for users to uh, play both the original and the third-party games within the app. Uh, that was part of their uh, partner presentation they had yesterday. They had a bunch of stuff yesterday, but that was that was the main announcement. And we knew that. They had talked about that a while ago, getting into the gaming, which we said on the show that day. I think that's a good thing. I think that's a smart way to do. So management is trying to find other sources of revenue here, which is a good thing. 
Um, it's been on an incredible run. I mean, the stock has doubled this year. So if you're buying up here now, you're definitely chasing it. That being said, you've kind of had four or five days of consolidation. You look like you want to break out here today. We do have an upgrade today. It's it's only, but it, but it's not to, uh, it's it's upgraded to hold at Summit Insights, price target 10 bucks. So, I mean, this isn't like a, a buy rating and this isn't a major broker that's giving the upgrade. Deutsche Bank also raised their price target today. From ten dollars to thirteen dollars, so that might be helping it a little bit too. But it's knocking on the door of that high eleven sixty seven. Probably going to challenge it. I think it could take out and get up to twelve potentially, maybe today. Uh, if you look out a little bit further, go further, then it starts to open up. I mean, the stock's come a long ways here. Yeah. I, I don't think I'd necessarily be shorting it, but I, I find I find myself hard to buy a stock up one hundred percent in three months. Uh, eleven sixty seven. Uh, that was your high back on March fifteenth. You hit eleven fifty four yesterday, trading up, uh, trading up twenty four cents there. So you clear eleven sixty seven, and you got yeah, uh, you could you, be off to the races. So yeah. a breakout trade. You're trying to break out trade here. Breakout trades have not been working, but this isn't your classic breakout with stocks breaking out to new highs. The stocks, you know, have been getting some love. The trend is clearly up in the last three months. So the short term trend is definitely your friend. So I don't know. I'd say if I'm buying it here at 1150, I would want to stop out below yesterday's low, which was uh, go 1099 or 1098, just to call it 1090. Give yourself a little room before 11. But if you put it on for a swing trade, I won't argue with you. The trend's your friend. I would not want to see a trade back below 11 though. Uh, back in late August of 2018, you had a you had a quad of highs from 1164 to 1184. So, you know, even don't get too excited here if you clear that. Uh, you know, yesterday's high, four highs in a row in the same area, pretty significant to me. So we'll keep an eye on that as potential resistance in Snap. You guys want to talk about uh, Shopify at all, Joel? Sure. Okay. Uh, Citron. Citron again uh, commenting on Shopify. He's been he's been negative on this since August, October of 2017. So he's been uh, dead wrong. He's been bearish all the way up. And good luck to him. <laughs> That's yeah. all I can say. But his comments yesterday were that uh, he expects Shopify to trade down a hundred dollars uh, in I guess in the next year. In the next year, he wants to get his money back. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, Andrew left. Uh, we know he's a mover and a shaker, and he comes out with a bearish report. And a uh, market will listen. This got hit on Andrew left. It also got hit, though. Good timing by Andrew left to come out with that because you could see growth was rolling over right after the open yesterday. So this is one of the stocks that was going to get hit no matter what. So part of it, Andrew left. Part of it, just the fact that everything Momo got hit yesterday, and Shopify is one of those stocks. Uh, let's take a look at the low from yesterday, 190.38. You had a 190.99 low back on March 11th. So close five bucks off it. So uh, no more downside until you take out that 190 level with a vengeance. Your next uh, daily low comes in at 181, but uh, close five bucks off the low here. So see if they can even take it down there. It's trading up 41 cents here um, in the pre-market at 195.16. Let's talk about the cloud sell-off because just all those stocks, and we know it was just because everything Momo was getting hit, but you look at CRM, that got hit yesterday. You can look at Splunk, SPLK, ServiceNow, NOW, hit hard yesterday. At one point, ServiceNow, if you look at this thing, 246 down to 230 at one time, it was down 14 bucks. So they did come off the lows. Is this an opportunity to come in here? I know we had Mark Chaikin on the show yesterday. Bad timing for him because he was coming out saying he's still like all the cloud stocks. They all got hit yesterday. Um, is this? I would think you get a little bit of a two-day move. So I, I, my personal opinion is I probably, if I was looking at these things, wait till after 10, 30, 11. If you get some follow-through, see how the jobs number is, then see what happens. But I, I don't know. Like they've had such a run too. I mean, this, you know, you can look at the service now and say this thing could look like come down to 220 or 215, and you could still probably argue that it's still on an uptrend. So, I mean, it's difficult to, you know, come in here and, and buy it at 235 or 237 when there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of room to the downside, a lot of room to the upside. I mean, I don't know where your out is. So, and the same thing with CRM. I mean, they've just been on such a run. I mean, I guess if you get below 150, you'd say it's your out. But, I mean, these stocks have been so hot, there's just a lot of room. 
in both directions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, a couple things you can look at, just general tips. I mean, just look at the lows for yesterday for continued follow through. I'm looking at service now. It had the low at uh, 230.14. And if I go back, I see a low just under that at 226.71. So if they hold, <clears throat> if they hold uh, yesterday's lows, yeah, there's definitely a good chance for a rebound. You can always get a, a 50% retracement. For me, I mean, I'm just, I, for me to get really interested in these stocks, they have to come down and fill some of these gaps, you know, just, you know, just so much so fast that, uh, you know, just look at the big gap areas, see if they can wither their way down and close them. But uh, they're rebounding today, hit yesterday, part of rotation and uh, see if that continues today. There was a uh, CRM. I haven't looked at that uh, stock in a long time. I mean, it's still, I mean, yeah, a sell off, but, Man, I mean, it's still not that far from yeah. all-time high. For CRM, yeah. though, uh, keep an eye on uh, 163. There's your highs for the last two days. So that's an important level to get through. Jump back to ratings. Just a couple other ones to note before we uh, get ready to go get the jobs number. Intel got downgraded here this morning. Who's that? Wells? I can't read my own writing. Wells I wrote it down. Yeah, valuation call. All right, so this just went too far. So obviously, this is one of the biggest positions. I've talked about this one, one of the biggest positions in my long-term portfolio, so I'm not pleased with Wells here this morning as I watched my Intel position down 1%. It was a good day yesterday for it, though. I mean, a lot of tech got hit, but it was growth tech. Intel's more value tech, and that stock held on. I, I think I, I, I'm going to talk my book, but I think Intel's a buy on the pullback. I'm holding on. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. I mean, a nice run up trading down 60 cents. I mean, these stocks, I mean, it's hard to say that uh, one downgrade is going to break the trend. Uh, interesting level though, for you Intel traders, uh, back in 2018, you snuck up to 5760 in yesterday's session, 5614. So 56. Now you've been over it. Now you're back under it. I'd say, you know, 56 is going to be your resistance, but uh, momentum carries this back up. I Next uh, monthly level comes in at uh, 57.60. Give us that all time high. Go out. Uh, you got to go 20 years back to the tech bubble. Is it 75 uh, you from always, my memory? Yeah, let me go to my monthly 75.69. Man, I'm good. I, I, I don't give myself enough credit because I always have a goldfish memory, but holy cow, I just remembered a level from 20 years ago. So isn't that incredible? Buy and hold. Buy and hold, well, guys. This I, is I what think... happens when you buy P multiples of 50 and 60 and the growth starts to slow down. It takes you 20 years to get some of your money back. You don't even get all of it back. So obviously Intel's P is coming. Oh, I think we may have lost Dennis there. But I, I, th I was going to say I think he remembers that because in his mind – 2005 was like last year, which is the same in my mind. And this is 2000, so okay. it's true. I yeah. still remember the 90s. Exactly. Do you remember the 90s, Spencer? Yes, I do. What yeah. were you doing in the 90s? What were you doing in 1999 when we were getting ready for the end of the world, when we were going to have Y2K and none of yeah. our computers yeah. were going to work I, because I, of the I, 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 I never, those Were you like in a bunker with you know all your gallons of water and you know, no, I, I I just remember that every single like promo code for anything was promo code Y2K, like for commercials. It was like promo code Y2K for this, Y2K for that. Uh, no, I was doing what everyone else my age was doing. I was playing Pokemon in the late 90s. Um, How old have you been in 1999? Eight. How old was I? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, He's a year I, older. I, I, I was eight years old. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> in Dennis. 1999, Joel was 60. <laughs> Okay, yeah, all right, go trade. 1999, right. I would have been I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell my Y2K story real quick before we. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've, we've all heard. Yeah, the one Y2K. Minute, you know what? I'm, a, I'm gonna listen to it in the background, but I'm all gonna right. go trade this jobs number. Joel, tell the Y2K number before we get this jobs number. You got one minute. Go. One minute. Okay. Uh, we went down to Florida and we were making reservations, and and Lisa was like, "Wow, there's all these flights that are open on January 1st, Y2K." I'm like, "Hey, they're cheap. Let's take the flights, right?" So we booked it. And the, you know, the day before they called two days before they called up and they said, no one is on this flight. You know, you got to reschedule. Uh, we're canceling the flights on that day. And they ended up, we ended up staying a couple days later. And because I got to stay in Florida the extra couple days, uh, Lisa and I got, go, got to go see the orange bowl when, uh, Tom Brady triple overtime defeated, uh, Alabama. 
boy, those were the days. <laughs> that was the last time that's happened. <laughs> okay, uh, real quick, jobs number imminent here. Just a quick preview. We are looking for a non-farm payroll figure of 175,000 jobs last month. Remember, the last reading we got uh, for February was 20,000 jobs. So that was uh, maybe a bit of an anomaly there. We're also looking for unemployment to hold steady at 3.8%. They like the number. And they like it. They, they like it. it. And average hourly wage is going to uh, expect it to uh, rise 0.3%. What do I get here? Non-farm payroll is 196. So I mentioned the estimate was 175. So yes, it is a hot number. 196,000 new jobs. Non-farm payroll was created last month. Uh, private payroll is also higher, 182,000 versus 170. So yes, it does appear February was a bit of an anomaly. Unemployment rate as expected, 3.8%. All right. And uh, well, the initial reaction here is a quick pop uh, over that uh, 89 and a quarter level we were talking about. That was Wednesday's high. That was also the high in the pre-market uh, before the session. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. 93.50 is where the pop took you to. Uh, no relevant number there. Uh, the question is, is do we have enough gas to get up to 2,900.75 today? That was your October 10th high basis on the front month contract. Uh, not real. I'm not seeing a lot of stock movement here as of yet. Uh, the financials, which had strong uh, gains over the last few days, are not really backing off on this. Uh, the spoos here are maybe starting to turn a little bit, but uh, number on the downside right now will be 89 to quarter. That was uh, Wednesday's high. So quick pop. I'm not seeing my stocks float around a whole lot. Uh, crude got a little pop, went green on that, but that's just hanging unchanged. Uh, this is the important part when you have the pop and the drop to see if they come in here and buy this here at 89 and a quarter. Uh, gold doesn't seem to be affected by this too much. Uh, trading down uh, a buck here at 1293.30. Uh, silver not really moving. Bitcoin really doesn't care. But uh, Spencer, so uh, you read the numbers real quick. Could you just uh, – Good numbers then, right? Yeah, also a slight revision, uh, 14,000 jobs uh, added. Revised, last month's reading was revised higher by 14,000 jobs. So still, uh, February was was a low number, but yes, uh, March was March is hot. March okay. is hot. March is hot. Hard on, uh, hot on private payrolls, hot on non-farm payrolls. Unemployment exactly where we thought it'd be at 3.8%, which is also where it was last month. So we're holding steady at, at, at the high, high 3% range. For unemployment, Dennis, are we are we moving here? Uh, we we hit the uh, they hit the TLT just okay, a I guess little so. bit here. Um, I mean, does this get interest rate interest rate hikes back on the table? I mean, you know, I, I mean, it just TLT was... was down going into it though, okay. so I don't. I would say TLT hasn't really moved much okay. off of this. And also, the financials. You're right, Joel. It, it, you saw the S and P pop, and we popped three four handles here, but really the stocks have kind of sat there. And they're still unsure. You haven't seen a lot of movement in the in the individual stocks here. Some of the banks are starting to catch a little bit of a bid, so that's obviously good, you know, for financials here. If you're going to get um, a hot number, but I, I don't know. Were there big? It, 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 you're, you're not seeing a lot of movement here, so the market's thinking. Really, so far, I would say it's almost a non-event. We've only moved three handles. Right, right. I mean, when uh, uh like, were there big offers up there? Like when uh, you know, on the pop. I mean, I we got the ninety-three fifty. It was about a four or five point pop. I mean, the stocks. I mean, I, I not enough of a reaction to get you know catch them and buy them up at this level. But uh, was there big sellers out there? Really, not much. Uh, I didn't really see any movement on the okay. stocks at all. Like I do see now they're starting to get some bits. So Goldman Sachs is starting to get bit up here a little bit. 20387 just trade, which just puts it up 0.8%. But okay. again, it's low volume here. So and the S and P's are starting to leak a little bit there. So from, from where we just popped it initially. Okay. I, I, it's it's more looks like a non event to me, really. Yeah. At this point in time, there's not a lot of movement off of this. Okay. All right. Let's uh, go and balances. There is some there is some okay. interesting ones here. I'm gonna go General Electric, 177,000 to sell. That is a trend. It has had some imbalances here for or uh, sell imbalances here for quite a few days in a row now. Another trend is AT&T. AT&T has had a lot of buy imbalances lately. 195,000 to buy. We're talking about the opening buy imbalances. 195,000 to buy here on AT&T. It did take out the $32 level that we talked about yesterday. We thought it might take it out. I covered my short on the open, thank goodness, because it quickly took out the 32 
ran up to 32.13 and is trading up nine cents here again. So somebody is accumulating some AT and T, and it is kind of in breakout mode here. Uh, trying to see what else we're looking at. No, there's not. They're, they're, they're pretty small. Okay. All right. It is 8:34 and 55 seconds. Uh, Spencer. Who's our guest today? Yep, we're going to take a quick break and grab today's guest, Alan Brockstein, author of The 420 Investor, founding partner at New Cannabis Adventures. We'll be right back in a moment here. Talk with some Mr. pot. Talk some pot with Mr. Brockstein. All right, and welcome back, everyone. Pre-market prep, Spencer Israel, Joel Elkan, and Dennis Dick. Quick housekeeping item. Our pre-market chat is back up. So our market five is down. It's back up now. If you want to head over to premarket.benzinga.com, you can do that. Uh, and we are now joined by Alan Brockstein, as I mentioned, author of 420 Investor, founding partner at New Cannabis Ventures. Alan, how's it going this morning? It's going great. Good to see you. Good, so, good to so see Luke you. So Luke had a wedgie. Is that what you were saying? The shareholders got a wedgie? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> they did. <laughs> are you, are you, have you ever had that Duluth underwear before? You no, that? but I have a, a kind of a marijuana story. Uh, one oh. of our clients was called Doja. And one of the things that was cool about it is the founder, they were acquired by uh, uh, Canopy Growth. They, they, they merged. They were haiku. They, well, anyway, uh, the founder uh, invented sax. S-A-X-X, -X, which is a uh, luxury underwear. Holy moly, that stuff's the bomb, but we're getting off top. <laughs> luxury, okay. Well, anyway, let's not even go down that road. All right, Alan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, so let's start off with a high level, and then we can get down to specific names here. But at a high level... Oh, yeah, I got that high level. I get it. <laughs> all right, that, I didn't even mean to make it like that, but okay. At a high... Yeah, thank you. Realize. I'll be here all week. Uh, at, uh, at a high level... Uh, give us your, your thoughts on just the state of the uh, public cannabis markets right now. Sure. So uh, Q1 was just awesome, but it came on the back of a pretty rotten Q4. What happened in Q4 was that uh, the Canada legalization uh, was kind of a fizzle, uh, number one. Number two, uh, there was a, a lot of supply of the U.S. Uh, multi-state operators that just flooded the market at the time. And then three, the general market conditions were pretty horrible, as I'm sure you remember. So uh, kind of was a perfect storm in the fourth quarter and it was just rotten. And then uh, we really recovered almost all of it in, uh, in Q1 and we're off to a good start. I think, uh, you know, I'd say that the main thing going on right now is that the universe of cannabis stocks, the, the quality is getting better, but the, probably the more important part is it's kind of migrating to the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ to a limited degree. And this is bringing in a lot more traders that are kind of, you know, making some money trading those stocks and venturing into some other stocks as well that may be traded on the CSE and the over the counter. Uh, and then, you know, we're also seeing uh, Investors Business Daily, uh, Barron's, CNBC all start to cover the space a little bit more, which I think kind of follows that New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ. Uh, uplisting for the Canadian LPs. Let's jump into individual stocks here. One that's been in the news quite a bit here, and again, this morning, Aurora Cannabis, the stock yeah. is 
I have this one in my long-term portfolio. It's the only pot stock that I do own. I've had it for a while. So yep. trending up here. Um, I bought it because you like this one too, Alan. So I was kind of following you. So thank you for Aurora Cannabis because you've kind of been bullish the last few times you've been on the show. What are your thoughts? We've had a pretty good move. I mean, really 2019 Aurora Cannabis up 60%, but a pretty good year so far for it. Is there more room to go or should we be ringing the register? Yeah, so full disclosure, client of mine at New Cannabis Ventures and also a very large holding in my model portfolio. So there's your answer. Uh, I think there's more to go. Uh, the uh, you know, So there's a technical angle here. And uh, we've seen a few of the LPs make all-time highs. We've seen like Canopy Growth, for instance, get right up to the, I don't know, Dennis, if you use the 78% or 76% retracement, but uh, right up to whatever you want to use, uh, right up there and uh, Can Canopy is getting, I'm sorry, Aurora is getting close to that. So I'm kind of watching for a breakout. I think that, uh, that Canopy and Aurora can make new all-time highs. And that's just from a technical standpoint. Now, if you back up to valuation, I think it gets a lot more challenging. Uh, but with that said, uh, I've been watching this market for a long time. Uh, I'm well aware of other markets where uh, valuation is not the way to, to you know, separate yourself from the pack. So the stocks are very technical. There's uh, a lot of new people coming into the market, institutional investors warming up. Uh, momentum traders like when there's breakouts. So I'm watching from that perspective. From a fundamental standpoint, uh, Aurora, uh, ha- there was a lot of doubt about it last year in terms of whether or not they'd be able to ramp up. They also did a lot of a lot of M&A. When I say a lot, I mean, there were a lot of little deals, but a, a few big deals that really, uh, they were stock deals and they weighed on the uh, shares, uh, especially late in the year after those deals had closed and the markets were going down. So uh, bottom line, I, I, I still like Aurora and uh, I'm hoping it can make a new all time high. It doesn't have to do that to be a good investment. Uh, Alan, we're getting a lot, a lot of tickers thrown out uh, in the chat. But before I, I bring those up, do you do you care necessarily where a stock is is listed? If it's listed on an exchange, if it's traded at OTC, do you, does that make a difference to you? To, to me personally, not so much, but I, you know, you have to understand that when it's on the higher exchange, it has a, a, a broader appeal. I think uh, you know a lot of the traders sure like it because the pre-market uh, and right. after-hours trading uh, is available when it's not really available for uh, those that aren't listed there. Right. Uh, so you know, it's a factor. It's not like it's, it makes the company worth a lot more. And I think over time, we'll see more and more of the TSX listed companies. Uh, you know, let's, let's rephrase that. The companies that aren't uh, breaking federal laws in the United States, we'll see more and more of them get listed on the major exchanges. And it can really be a catalyst for the company if it's not well known. Uh, you know, like Village Farms, uh, which is a half of an LP and a hemp play, they, they weren't, I don't think that they were super well known uh, in the United States. And when it hit, the, uh, I think they're on the NASDAQ, if I'm not mistaken, when it hit the NASDAQ, Stock just exploded. It, it also correlated with some news. Uh, that was actually one of the names thrown out in our chat. So rather than just ask you your opinion on everything, because we know you sometimes you you know can't always give your opinion. Uh, just tell us what yeah. you know. What do you know about uh, Village Farms? So Village Farms uh, came out. I didn't really like what they were doing at first for two reasons. Number one, they partnered with Emerald Health, and I didn't get that. There were so many. I mean, Emerald Health had not scaled up, had nothing to bring to the table in terms of uh, uh, how to do large scale mm-hmm. cultivation. And number two, these guys literally said, we can grow tomatoes, we can grow cannabis. And, and that's just the, all the facts argue against that. Sure. If you if you grow tomatoes over time, you can learn to grow cannabis, but there's a, a, a learning curve. And so that that had been a concern of mine. And, and they're starting to ramp up, but we'll see. Uh, I think the company was really helped by. The fact that, that they have these facilities like in Texas where they're going to convert it to hemp. Uh, so they, they've got a new story going now. Uh, but, you know, it, it was always a story that if, if they could prove that they could execute, it was cheap. And so far, they're, they're on the path. Uh, they've started to execute. I think it's early to judge. What can you tell us about Cureleaf? So Cureleaf uh, was one of those companies that came out in the fourth quarter and flooded the market. I think... As a matter of fact, I think they were uh, uh, the one, if I'm not mistaken, that where Canaccord said the demand was so great that it they kind of like tricked everybody into putting in three times uh, the the size of the what they really wanted. I'm sure you know that that game on new issues. Sometimes 
you know you're going to get allocated so you put in well everybody got their full allocation uh, from what i understand and it was brutal so the stock was really beaten up uh, they're one of the few companies that have given uh, guidance uh, very very concrete guidance for 2019 400 million in revenue and uh, you know it's an interesting company uh, you know i'm getting to know these companies as public companies now i've been following them as private companies peripherally and uh, you know i'd say there's there's probably going to be about five to ten really big U.S. names, and Cureleaf would be one of them. Here's one I never really heard of: uh, SRUTF. Yeah, so that's a small little Canadian LP that uh, is uh, focused on beverages, and uh, okay. it's called Sproutly. Do you, any simple, What's that? You know, what? What? Just just cannabis, just CBD beverages. I mean, what? What? what yeah, you know, I, I think it's too early to make a judgment, okay. and uh, it's a pretty speculative name. But okay. yeah, that's that that is their main focus to focus on uh, cannabis beverages, and you know they're in Canada, so uh, hopefully they'll be legal there shortly. Let's oh. jump to some of the bigger ones here. Uh, Tilray, this stock has not participated in the recent nope. pot stock rally at all. It's actually went straight down. So yep. um, it's interesting, you know, because uh, we're looking at 2019 performers. and This one's in the red. It might be one of the only ones in the red. Is there a certain point in time that there's some value here? I mean, it got ridiculous when it got to 300 there uh, a year ago when everybody had to own it. Or I guess it's a, yeah, back uh, about a year yep. ago. Well, not even September. Um, now you're at $61 here. What's your thoughts on Tilray, T-L-R-Y? So about a year ago, they were selling shares at like seven and three quarters dollars privately before they went public. Then they went public at 17. Next thing you know, it's trading at $300, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm trying to come up with what I think is the right price. I've always said that this is a good company uh, and it'll probably be a leader. Uh, honestly, their execution has been a little bit flawed, if you ask me. But uh, it's still early, you know, as a Canadian LP, it's still early. So they definitely check all the boxes uh, in, in terms of having global operations. And so I, I don't want to step away from I, I do think it's a good company, but the valuation has been a challenge. Uh, you know, before their last report, I was saying, you know, given the changes in the market since last uh, when they went public in July, you know, it's worth more than 17 probably at this point. And I was saying, you know, 40 is just a rough numbers, quote unquote, what it's worth. But I've learned that stocks don't trade necessarily <laughs> at what I think they're worth. So I'm watching it from a technical perspective. I'm watching the CEO and, and the head of, I think he's the COO, you know, sell out stock hand over mm. fist. So, uh, you know, I think that's a good signal right there that uh, the stock's probably not about to go anywhere anytime soon. So I think there's a technical overhang and uh, there's a gap down to $45 uh area it looks uh and there's one up above it too but you know i don't know if it's going to get there i think i think everybody would be better off if it just dropped there filled that gap got to a price that people wouldn't un unanimously except for one analyst uh say that it's too high so i don't know i'm watching it closely what about chrono zero and this one's pulled off the highs we got up 25 dollars Back in February, we're 18 here now. It's kind of a consolidation station, at least for the last week, just kind of hanging out. Thoughts on C-R-O-N. Yep. So I, I've never understood the valuation of this. And, uh, you know, they've, they've done a good job, I think, uh, on many fronts, but uh, their market cap is way out of whack with where their current operations are. That doesn't mean that you can't justify their valuation, but I can't justify their valuation. So I think it's... Uh, a challenge, you know, they're one of the two companies that's been given, uh, you know, billion dollar plus of cash, and, but given up control of the company, essentially. Uh, you know, they are controlled by Altria for all intents and purposes. And, uh, you know, investors, I think, like the canopy growth and Kronos have this big um, wad of cash now, but, you know, they need to deploy the cash smartly. So we'll see how that happens, because to me, when you have a dollar, it's worth a dollar. And when you invest it, maybe it'll be worth more. But when it's just sitting on your balance sheet, it's only worth a dollar uh, when it's a dollar. So uh, the stock's trading way above where Altria invested. And uh, I, I don't get it. So uh, Buzz T asking a question. This would be a good one to finish with. So we've talked a lot of different stocks. Do you have a sleepy one? Do you have one that you like right now that you think uh, would be a good investment at this price? What are your 
What are your thoughts? What would be an Alan Brockstein pick at this I, point? So, you know, Alan Brockstein's not going to give up his hands. But what I will <laughs> do is, I, 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 uh, I'll, I'll show you the hand because uh, I, I wrote about this publicly, and I don't, I don't really do that very often. I have over 1,100 subscribers at 420 Investor that are paying for this stuff. But uh, Alcana, uh, which is a Canadian company, uh, they've refocused, and so they're almost primarily a Alberta liquor store. And that business has struggled. The, the Alberta economy has struggled. What's the uh, symbol? Uh, I'm sorry, it's CLIQ. And in the United States, uh, on the OTC, it's LQSIF. And so this is a classic uh, value story, but it, it, it's it's not a like a value trap, in my opinion, because they're actually turning around and growing their, their alcohol business. And just to simplify the story, I think you can justify the, the current market cap, the price right now on just their alcohol business. But they also have uh, the potential to be one of the leading uh, uh, cannabis retailers in Canada. They have uh, five sites open in Alberta that are doing very well. And then they have one in Ontario. Uh, and so unfortunately, the Canadian retail has been a bomb so far. And uh, there's a lot of reasons, but basically it goes down to the supply hasn't been high enough. So Alberta quit giving out licenses because the stores can't get restocked. Ontario was a total mess up. Uh, so they have 20, 25 stores or so that are opening right now, but that's, Ontario is huge. I mean, Colorado has 500 dispensaries and Colorado is way smaller than Ontario. So uh, there's been some challenges for all retailers, but here's the, the easy way to look at it. There's about six Canadian retailers, look at the market caps, then look at Alcana, then say, well, what's their alcohol business worth? And I think you get that cannabis business pretty much for free. Uh, Alan, I don't know if we're going to get the chance to talk to you before 420. It's on a Saturday, and then the 19th is a market holiday, so we, we will be closed. But uh, how are you going to celebrate at 420 this year? Well, I'm hoping to see you the day before. Uh, going to Canada, taking my wife. That's uh, right. We're that's having right. a conference. That's right. I, I will not be there. I will not be there, unfortunately. Ah. Yeah, but uh, that's right. I should mention that. The, Benzinga, the third Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference is coming up. Uh, in that week, it's the 17th and 18th in, in Toronto. Uh, BenzingaCannabisConference.com is the site there, and you can uh, hang out with Alan, meet him. Uh, learn you can even smoke a joint with me. You can go to the Canopy uh, Growth Store on Young Street, and uh, hopefully they won't be out of stock. We'll buy a, a pre-roll and uh, have some fun. All right. Uh, well, I hope I, you know, although I won't be there. I hope those those of you in our chat, uh, if you want to find out more again, BenzingaCannabisConference.com. Hang out with Alan Brockstein, smoke a joint with him, and uh, go to some investor presentations and hear from these execs what makes their company so great. Alan Brockstein, as always, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, uh, Alan. Thanks, guys. Feel better, Dennis. Yeah, Thank we'll you. talk to you soon. <laughs> Uh, S and P's, we hit that 93.50 and we are holding up here in the 28.90 handle. Actually, that was the last print. So what I'm looking for on the open here is we could just crush that pre-market high, take it out by three or four points in the first, you know, uh, five, 10 minutes, and then we'll make a run at 2,900. Uh, the more we fall back here under 28.90, really don't have much to lead on. I mean, you could say Wednesday's high. Could is support here, old resistance, new support here. So keeping an eye, see if we stay in a 2890 handle for the S and P futures. Uh, Dennis, where do we go? We we have no earnings to talk about. We talked about the jobs reports. What else do we uh what else we need to cover? More earnings? Uh, Rating, there ratings. was no earnings. Ratings. We can go back to the ratings though, because I mean, there were some interesting yes. ones before yeah. uh what are you saying, Spencer? Yeah, no, no, that's that's exactly. There are a lot of ratings of notes. Yeah, there is. We, we okay, talked about a couple. Talked about a couple. Um, let's see here. We have Celgene catching a downgrade this morning from Canada Fitzgerald's neutral. That uh, we we talked about Intel already. We have Constellation Brands downgrade. Let's talk Constellation Brands. Okay, what? sure. Jesus, Murphy, what a move in that thing. That is a derivative. Uh, we talked about it in uh, yesterday when it was it was down. It was way up. And uh, I said, keep an eye on the close. And uh, it came down six bucks and went through the close. You would have had to take a couple bucks worth of heat because it went to 178.12. But then just exploded and went to 193.19. I mean, this stock was just what a move yesterday. The downgrade here, not moving much off it, but uh, 
I guess a lot of people are probably stuck on the wrong side of the short of this one. I just don't think we're going to go right back down in this one. I mean, the, you're right. On this earnings report, it was wild. It traded before the earnings report because they were divesting those 30 businesses, traded down to 173, bounced right back, then traded up to 185, then got hit on the earnings report back in the 170s, then just ripped all day yesterday, all the way up. So lots of people underwater in this thing now if you're playing it from the short side. Lots of uh, people, you know, obviously up if they're playing it from the long side. But um it's pulling back a little bit here on the downgrade, but such a nice candle yesterday makes me think it's not going to give that much of it back. I'm almost prone. Who downgrade? Deutsche Bank? Yes. Yeah, Kramer was giving it some love last night on Mad Money, too, was trading up on that. I, I think I'm a buyer of this pullback, but the problem is Where's I don't know where yeah. <laughs> because it's such a such a big move yesterday. I mean, you could say, okay, I'll buy it at 190, but you stop yourself at 189, 188, 187. I mean, you could go all the way down to 185. So I like it on the pullback. I just don't know where to strike. What about Bed Bath & Beyond getting an upgrade this morning to neutral from Morgan Stanley, BBBY? Uh, the stock's retail. Retail love yesterday. Now follow through here. It was sleepy. It wasn't doing anything. I was on the books after the earnings. was 17 and a quarter saying, I think this thing could give it all back. It has not. It has held on. So it was trying and just kind of hanging out there for five days until yesterday when we had the full retail rally in every retail stock. And now it gets a beneficiary of an upgrade. I mean, it's kickstarting it. So anybody playing from the short side is going to be scratching their heads on this one. So I guess, you know, you got to you know say when you, the trade's not working out. I, I didn't put this on, obviously, but I was publicly bearish on the show. And I would say I'd be nervous now if I was short because you are breaking out. That being said, um, are you going to get a chance to cover back in the 17s? Maybe. I don't know if I'm buying it up here, but it's just got a high short interest. The thing's showing some life, and retail stocks are hot. I don't want to be short any retail stocks right now. This is a retail stock. There's a big pop here for uh, Triple B Y, uh, trading up uh, 59 cents at 18.18. That is uh, eclipsing the former high of the move made on that earnings day at 18.09. So maybe be more interested if you came down to the top of yesterday's range. Oh, that's a ways away, 17.64. Uh, basis, the monthlies here, you don't have much until your September 2018 high at 1959. And uh, I'm sure we might see a tweet or two from uh, Reverend Emmanuel Amelson today because uh, that was one of uh, one of his big choices here. But uh, good move here off the upgrade, trading right at the highs of the pre-market. I like the retail stocks for follow through here today. This is retail. Uh, Viacom upgraded as well this morning, RBC Capital, to outperform. I mean, this stock is all about, is it going to eventually get taken back over by CBS? Um, obviously, there's a lot of, you know, the headline risk there if you're playing it long or short because if they come out and say, yeah, you know, CBS is not interested. But it's still been on the table there. It's still been rumored. It's been flying up here for the last two weeks. 30 bucks major resistance major psychological resistance level there too shows up on the charts uh, i can't get that excited with this upgrade i feel like it's late to the party yeah especially since you were what under 25 dollars uh, just uh, less than a month ago uh looking at the dailies here don't really see anything at 30 bucks and we're trading at the highs of the pre-market session at 29.99 i think my focus would be be a little bit higher than that. Uh, see if we can get up to 30.57. That was your high back on February 6, 30.89. So <clears throat> I don't know if we'll see that today, but uh, see what happens at 30 bucks. See if anybody wants to take some profits after this nice run from 24.85. The so RBC note today is talking about a potential deal with CBS okay. as well. So we know that's like the wild card here. If they do come out and see if CBS eventually buys them, it could be 34 or 35 bucks. But if CBS eventually says they're out, this thing can be back at 26 in a hurry. So I think it's a coin flip here at 30 bucks. Valuation's still okay. I mean, some of the media stocks, they have not participated. And I look at like one, like AMCX, for instance. I'm not in it anymore. I sold it back up when it had, you know, I thought it got just a little bit too high when it got into the upper 60s. Um, I've been looking at this and thinking maybe I should sneak back into AMCX, um, you know, because content is still king. Some of these you know, contents uh, uh, plays here, are fairly cheap. I mean, CBS itself has come back a little bit lately, but you know, look at Alliancegate. I own this one in portfolio. It's starting to look like it maybe wants to try to finally maybe start to go here. Um, we know some like Discovery because they've had more rumors have uh, you know been participating. But yesterday, media stocks were showing some life. 
So think of Discovery, think of Lionsgate, think of AMCX. All these stocks are starting to show a little bit of life. You've been uh, bullish on Lionsgate. Yeah, I've take, been wrong. Take out for, for a while. I've been, I've been wrong. I thought it might get taken out, and I've been wrong, and I've been punished for it too because I'm in from, oh, I'm probably this longer-term portfolio. I'm in for the 20s. So I'm under significant water here. So, I mean, can't be right on them all, right? You wish, you know, as, as traders, you know, if you're batting 52 or 53%, you're doing pretty good. So, you know, you're exactly. going to just all about what you leave on the table. And on the long-term portfolio, I try not to look at the stuff. I still think it's some value there. I still think there's good content there. I still think eventually the stock's going to come back. So that's why I'm, I, I, I like the story still. That's why I stick with it. All right, uh, that'll do it for today's show. I do want to mention, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show yet, but we have a date now for the first ever Benzinga Trading Summit. We are partnering with Traders for a Cause to host a conference in New York City on June 7th, specifically geared towards traders, uh, all kind, uh, swing, uh, day traders, doesn't, doesn't matter, long, short, whatever. Uh, so the Benzinga Trading Summit is June 7th uh, in at the New York Hilton in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, I believe Dennis, Joel, and myself are going to be there as well as many yep. other people from the world of trading. The Benzinga Trading Summit uh, com. That's the website to learn more about that. Get your ticket. And, uh, and yeah, so I'll be talking about that a lot more throughout the next uh, two months, but that is, that is uh, the first announcement about that here on the show, I believe, is so Benzinga, Benzinga Trading Summit.com. That's it, Benzinga Trading Summit.com in, in New York. So, those of you in the area, check it out. And I'll, but again, I'll mention more about that in the coming weeks and months. But that's it for today's show. Thank you to Alan Brockstein. Thanks to all of you in uh, both our chats on YouTube and premarket.benzinga.com. Please remember all the information from our show is for informational purposes only, not meant to be in investing advice and that's it so it's friday everyone have a good rest of your day have a good weekend and we'll be back with you on monday morning